Hey, what's up? Uh, this is uh, Malan sir here, and uh, I'm here uh, to continue, you know, uh, with another video. And uh, this video is from Halloween and Halloweens. And uh, again, this time, uh, it's about you know stereo aspect, stereo chemical aspect of the nucleophilic chemical substitution reaction. So uh, in the earlier video, I have covered almost every topic, you know. So that's everything is going to be in a very very sequential manner. What you need to do, you just have to, you know, open the playlist for Halloween Kings and Halloweens, and you will have each and every topic coming up right there, right? So in case there is a, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, lack of rearrangement, you just have to, you know, do it on your own because the uh, right now the playlist has not been completed. So once the chapter has gone, uh, you know, uh, over, I will make a fresh, you know, playlist for Halloween Kings and Halloweens or every chapter I am doing so that you have. Everything in a sequence, and you get to know everything about your chapter. So right now, I'm talking about you know stereo chemical. I mentioned some of these topic because there were so many topic. I thought I might you know make a list of that, and then I'll be explaining one by one here. So the topic we have right now is stereo chemical aspect of uh, you know nucleophilic substitution reaction, right? So this time, you know definitely it's going to be uh, you know uh, the, the small topics. And uh, they are not that much important, but still play uh, you know a huge role in deciding how stronger you are when it comes to talk about the halogens and halogen. So with that, I must start and let me take you through that. Uh, let's start with the first one. What is plain polarized lighting? So I'm you know taking you you know with this particular topic. So I'm making a box here and I'll try to explain each of them you know one by one. Are you with box? Okay, so what plain polarized light is? You know, the light. You know, the light from from ordinary ordinary source source of light when passes through. passes through nicol prism passes through nicol prism is called plain polarized light plain polarized light so this is it you know what plain polarized light is it's an ordinary light coming from any light source but it is passed through a nicol prism and after the prism you know has a you know pass that light out that light is called plain polarized light so by definition it's just a theory it's just a matter of understanding you don't have to you know dig about you know where it is and how it is so this is just a you know a light coming from nicol prism after an ordinary light is passed through nicol prism right so that is the plain polarized light now let's talk about you know the second one so this was your first one this one was your first one now let's talk about the second one so what is an optically active compound here that is the second topic we have a compound a compound solution which can which can rotate plain polarized light polarized light either a uh, clockwise clockwise or anti clockwise anti clockwise is called plain polarized light sorry is called optically active compound optically active compound okay let me uh, explain you what this is you know an optically active compound is you know is a compound and uh, for which if you make a solution and you pass the plain polarized light Through that solution, what happens? The light changes its direction 
either in clockwise or in anti clockwise and if there is something like that as compound is able to rotate a plane polarized light when a light is passed through the solution then the compound can be called you know optically active compound so due to the ability of rotation into uh, in the light a compound is called optically active compound which is of two types so it's of it's of two types one is called dextro dextro rotatory and other is called levo rotatory this one is represented by a plus sign this one is represented by a minus sign before before the symbol before the before the name of a compound name of compounds so let me repeat that the compound whose solution can rotate plane polarized light either towards clockwise towards right or towards left then the compound can be called optically active compound now i'm coming to the type of the you know the, uh, optically active compound you know there are two types one is called dextro rotatory other is called levo rotatory dextro rotatory compound is represented with a plus sign before its name and a levo rotatory compound is represented by a negative sign uh, you know before the compound so let's talk about you know the dextro rotatory and levo rotatory compound this one is dextro rotatory the solution yeah the compound with solution the compound whose solution rotate plane polarized light plane polarized light towards right or clockwise is called you know dextrorotatory compound as i have already mentioned a dextrorotatory compound has a plus sign before its name right so uh, i am coming to the example but before that let me finish the next one which is the levo rotatory l a e v o levo rotatory levo rotatory and represented by a minus sign here so what this is again you can understand the compound the compound whose solution whose solution a uh, rotate plane polarized light plane polarized light towards left or anti clockwise anti clockwise so that's called a levo rotatory compound let's talk about you know an example right so if you have understand a compound whose solution can rotate a plane polarized light towards the right it is called dextro but if it if it rotates you know towards the left the uh, the compound is called levo rotatory so um, let's uh, take the example we had earlier in sn1 reaction where there were two products being formed so i'm repeating the whole example so that you understand exactly there was you know a nucleophilic reaction between oh negative and this was reacting with third butyl bromide this was reacting with third butyl bromide right and in this case you know uh, in this case uh, what was happening here that uh, you know two products were formed there were two products formed there was one right here there was one like this but there was another product you know there was another product and that product was uh oh was in the left side oh was in the left side so what do you see in this case that there the oh is on the left side and there the oh is on the right side this is a case of sn1 reaction where a nucleophilic attack 
you know takes place in presence of polar protic solvent if you remember that polar protic solvent polar protic solvent in presence of polar protic solvent a nucleophilic substituent reaction produces two you know product so this one is a you know tert uh, you know this is a uh, dextrorotatory you know tert butyl or uh, this is like you know uh, two methyl propane to all two methyl propane to all but there the plus sign represent that this molecule dextrorotatory but there we have uh, again two methyl propane propane to all but there minus sign represent that this is a levorotatory let me you know write back here so this is a you know levorotatory compound levo rotatory while this one is a dextro rotatory dextro rotatory okay let me repeat back the same thing here we were talking about you know the dextro rotatory and levo rotatory compound and, and uh, then i said you know a compound you know whose solution rotate the plane polaroid light towards the right it is called dextro rotatory but the one which rotate the plane polaroid light towards the left is called a levo rotatory right how can you know uh, which compound is dextro and which one is levo this is not something you can determine especially looking at the structure of a molecule because this is something experimentally you know find out so i'm not going to talk about you know the method how you can get get to know which one is levo and which one is dextro but there must be one levo and one dextro in case of sn1 reaction is taking place and the uh, the alkyl halide is a you know optically active alkyl so this must be optically active optically active alkyl halide alkyl halide so if the alkyl halide is optically active then and if sn1 reaction takes place it will give two product one of them is going to be levo rotatory other is going to be dextro rotatory a levo rotatory compound is denoted by a minus sign before the ipc name while the dextro is represented by a plus sign before the ipc name so these are the two you know facts about the levo and dextro let me take you through the next topic in the sequence here so i'm going to wipe this off so what next we have we have you know optical isomers here so the next topic we have is optical isomers this is just a theory, theory and a definition optical isomers the pair of compound the pair of compound compound which which have the ability to ability to rotate plane polaroid light plane polarized light towards left or right left or right are called are called you know optical isomers right so there is one with the dex the one is called dextro one is called dextro rotatory and other is called levo rotatory levo rotatory as i said earlier this is represented by minus sign this is represented by a plus sign so what are optical isomers the isomers of a compound uh, you know which have ability to rotate the plane polaroid light and uh, give the rotation to the light is called optical isomer now let's go for the next topic in the sequence stereo center what stereo center is this is also called asymmetric carbon this is also called asymmetric carbon so what these are the carbon to which the carbon to which all four substituents all four substituents attached are different 
attached are different are called stereo center stereo center let's take an example so let's take an example here what do you see that there are methyl everywhere here and just change it anything like hydrogen and there is a oh so what you see that you know uh, oh is on the right side and these two are the methyl group so what that mean it's not it's uh, it's not stereo center it's not stereo center let's take another example here now what you see there is ethyl here there is alcohol here there is methyl here there is hydrogen so all four substances are different so this is called stereo center this is called stereo center now uh, stereo center uh, uh, is really really important in order to decide you know how many products you are going to have in uh, you know uh, in sn1 reaction so but before i been come to that let me repeat back the whole thing uh, it is a it is a carbon to which all the four substituents are different it is called stereo center and if it's not different it's not a stereo center right so this is about the stereo center i hope you have understand let's take back to the chiral here so chiral is much similar to you know uh, there so what chiral is here so the next topic we have in our sequence is chiral so what is chiral you know uh, the mirror image the mirror image of a compound image of a compound that cannot that cannot superimpose that cannot super impose the original structure is called chiral so let's take an example like i just had carbon there was one there was two carbon there was oh here there was hydrogen here and there was one methyl here right so what we see out if there is a mirror here you have to understand if there is a mirror here what will happen this oh will be appears to be on the left side the oh will appears to be on the left side and h will be on the right side this carbon will be right here you know so these two images this is a mirror image this is a mirror image image and not superimposable not super imposable on each other on each other so what that mean these two cannot be super imposable what but like it's like you know you put uh, you know your your left hand is right here so what you see that your thumb is on the right hand side the thumb is on the right hand side but in the mirror image what happen your thumb is going on the left hand side my thumb is going on the left hand side so these two are not super imposable this is what a condition which is called chiral molecule i hope uh, i have made you go through this one right let's talk about the next one what is the you know a chiral next topic in sequence is a chiral of course you have understand right now a chiral you know the mirror image mirror image of a compound of a compound that can be superimposed that can be super imposed on each other on each other so let's take an example here suppose you have uh, you know like uh, carbon 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 or uh, so what will be the image of this compound of course is going to be looking absolutely same 
is going to be looking absolutely same. So this is a chiral. But what that mean? They are superimposable. Super imposable on each other. On each other. So this is what a chiral is. Now what next topic we have in our sequence is enantiomer. So let's talk about the enantiomer. You know uh, the dextro the dextro rotatory ro dextro rotatory and levo rotatory levo rotatory levo rotatory isomers isomers of a compound are called enantiomer enantiomer what that mean if a compound has a, you know dextro and levo form this pair of isomer will be specially called enantiomer right so this is you know what enantiomer is here now what next topic we have is racemic mixture so this is like racemic mixture going to be really easy here you know a uh, solution made by made by dissolving dissolving equal concentration of of uh, in uh, of dextro and levo dextro and levo levo compound of a type of a type form racemic mixture racemic mixture let me explain you you know uh, what happen if you mix dextro and levo uh, two isomers of a compound in equally amount in a solution that mixture is called a racemic mixture why it's called a racemic mixture because the one with having a left rotation and the other with having a right rotation they will cancel out each other rotation so what's the outcome is going to be, uh, outcome is going to be here you know uh, such mixture such mixture have zero optical rotation because the two compounds the two isomers cancel each other each other rotation rotation so this is what is important about the racemic mixture right and then we have come to the last topic for and that is going to be racemization so in case you have problem uh, do let me know or you, or you can repeat uh, and then watch it again because what happens sometimes you watch it for the first time you don't get it exactly but when you repeat it back you get it you get it you get it so you need to be sure what exactly the topic is so what racemization is uh, the process the chemical process process by which by which <clears throat> by which the enantiomers enantiomers if you remember uh, inversion and configuration invert inversion product inversion and retention products are formed r form is called called racemization racemization
right so let me take you an example here this imagination and uh, that going to be like uh, suppose we have a compound here carbon there is a there is a, an alkyl group here there is a different alkyl group here and there you have the you know uh, nothing but a hydrogen and uh, there is a halogen cane here so it's a halogen going to be what you see out here that uh, you know this is a chiral molecule this is a chiral molecule why because all the four substituents are different this is a different alkyl group this is a different alkyl group this is hydrogen and this is halogen so what happen i have already told you if uh, you know this undergo attack from this side by a nucleophile you know it forms it forms this kind of product it forms this kind of product but if the attack is from this side if the attack is from this side by the nucleophile nucleophile the product is going to be is going to be you know like uh, nucleophile is going to be on the left side nucleophile carbon and hydrogen there is alkyl group there is alkyl group so what you see this is you need to understand this is your inversion product this is your inversion product and this is your retention product this is your retention product so in a process where both type of you know products are formed 50% inversion 50% retention the reaction can be called racemization and this mixture can also be called racemic mixture what that mean one is deferratory other will be a levetatory let me repeat the whole thing it is the process by which you know both inverted and you know retentate products are formed you know by nucleophilic substitute reaction then it is called racemization as you can see from the example it is very obvious that if uh, you know this reaction is carried out in presence of polar protic solvent you remember that in presence of polar protic solvent and if this is an alkyl halide which is optically active you need to understand this must be optically active this must be optically active then it will form two product and the process by which these two products are formed that is called racemization so this is what the topic is so i have finally come to the end of the studio chemical aspect of nucleophilic substitution i hope uh, uh, you going to get it almost everything so i'm like very close to completing the chapter halogen chains and halogens maybe uh, within uh, one or two days i will try to complete everything so that you get your playlist completed in order to watch it right so with that i must say thanks for watching in case you haven't subscribed me yet do that so that you know um, i might help you in some way and you might help me in some way as well right that's it